Welcome back to the Poison Touch Advice Hour, the podcast where a computer technician and his friends give you all the best and worst advice to deal with all of life's predicaments. Even if you are not entirely sure what this year's Met Gala theme is, because I don't think anyone is. I'm joined today by the king of sound design, the uh, the icon of soundscapes, a, a horror icon in their own right. I am joined by Ralph Anthony from the Scream Queer podcast. How you doing, Ralph? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm excited to have you here. Uh, and I and I do not say king of uh, of soundscapes lightly because every time I listen to your podcast, viewers, if you have not listened to Scream Queer yet, do it because you will be shocked, spooked. Um, <laughs> a lot of work goes into it. I I love hearing uh, soundscape stuff. You like maybe you want to step up my game. Honestly, like that means so much. Like, thank you for like noticing. But no, um, I tip my hat to you as well because I just when I first came across your podcast, I was like, holy, wait, can, can we cuss on here? We, we, we can, of course, we can cuss on here. Oh, okay, I was like, holy fuck, this is so good. <laughs> um, and your your voice, like the way that you just like present everything, and then I think I even asked you for a trailer one time, and then you like had it done in like like an hour, and it was like. Are you using in insatiable cheese most? I'm like, oh, this is so good. So I'm definitely <laughs> a fan, and that means a lot that you um are saying all those nice things about about my podcast. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. In college, I had a professor that was um was for a live TV class that I took. So like running the sound and control and like the switcher for the the cameras and stuff. And anytime I was directing, he would be like, You need to uh put a little more anger in your voice <laughs> he said i sounded like um like a smooth jazz talk radio person he said i was gonna put everyone to sleep and i think i took that to heart no, i was yeah, like it, oh my god it's so good like you can totally do like an asmr like thing too like just like reading people's stories to help them go to sleep or something you hear that patreon it's really good it's really if you're good. on the patreon you can get some asmr hey <laughs> we, there we you can go get right there <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, want to introduce yourself in the podcast a little bit for the, the people that are joining that may not be familiar with you? Uh, well, hello, everyone. My name is Ralph Anthony. I am the host, editor, producer, and the writer of the Scream Grip podcast, um, which is a, it started out as a true crime horror movie podcast, and then it kind of just evolved into what it is now, which is um, I pretty much talk about everything um, on popular opinions. I have like a hot topic segment, um, 911 calls, and it's just like a little bit of everything. I, I refer to it as kind of like a ver variety show now. Um, but yeah, and I just, I think the best part of it has been just really connecting and just coming across like other awesome people who have a passion for the creativity and, and all of that. So once again, thank you for having me, Jake. Thank you. Yeah, I think variety show is a really good way to describe your podcast. It's like uh, the Wendy Williams Halloween special, but every week, you know, <laughs> in, in, you know what, that's how I'm going to start like describing it now. Yeah. The Wendy Williams it, Halloween special. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's I mean, the, the title of this episode, the Wendy Williams Halloween special. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, oh my God. That's so good. Shout out to Wendy. I don't think I'd be here without her. Oh my God. How you doing, Wendy? How you doing? How Honestly, you do it? really, <laughs> shout out to I feel Wendy so Williams. bad for her. I, I feel so bad. Tangent here, though. No, really, I feel so bad for her. I hope yeah. she, uh, dementia is, is a bitch. And yeah. to have, like, yeah. the advanced form that she has and to be going through those things, and it fully changes who you are as a person. I just really, mm. you know, my heart goes out to people that are working with her and, and taking care of her and making sure that she's okay, because that's got to be tough. Yeah. No, yeah. Real tough. Yeah. yeah, actually, my grandpa actually had Alzheimer's. Um, he, it's, it like starts out as dementia and then it goes to Alzheimer's, I think. Mm -hmm. Could be wrong. But it's just, it's horrible just to see someone who, you know, like you've loved just kind of disintegrate into someone who just like looks lost all the time. And um, not to get all heavy here, but you no, know, yeah, like it's, it's, it's so crazy just how it can change someone so much. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, Enough of that, you know, we're shaking it off, Wendy. Yeah, none of that right now. Uh, shout out to you, Diva. <laughs> get that out of here. <laughs> Let's get uh, into, yeah. uh, first I want to do some rapid fire questions that, you know, we've collected off of the, the, the submission form. And then I want to get into an update that we had from 
my episode last month with Aaron. So some rapid fire questions. Fuck, Mary kill, horror icons. You go first, then I'll go. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I definitely would um, fuck Freddy because I know he's nasty. Um, I would definitely kill, um, oh my gosh, uh, Leprechaun because I don't do anything like Duende or like, Not low I'm like five and almost six feet so anything that's like four feet or below like i'm terrified of i don't know it's so weird just so i would kill him and then um uh definitely marry ghost face because i mean they can be so many people and i just it that's my that's my go-to i, I love, love ghost face ghost face says you want to see other people sure yeah <laughs> a new person. right a new person every day there yeah you go. i people. am going to marry the uh the potato sack guy from the strangers <laughs> i feel like he could take oh my care gosh yeah i feel like i would not have to worry about things around him he could take care of me that's that's a man he knows how to fix a pipe he knows how to you know yes <laughs> yes and he's sneaky him. too so you gotta watch out for that though but yes yeah but you that's know it's a good one he'll handle me i'll handle him <laughs> then i will yeah. <laughs> i'm killing art the clown 100 i'm killing art the clown that bitch is freaky oh yeah art the clown you can go yeah. and i yeah, will yeah no that is beyond i will fuck i'm fucking michael myers but specifically oh God, I forgot about michael. yeah michael myers i was stuck between michael myers and jason Voorhees, you know but i think i'm i think i'm going mm-hmm. with michael jason's more like rotten and i don't think that's that would the thing be like, he's like all he's that would like be the vibe drowned and that means he's gonna be all like uh waterlogged and like stuff smelly and just he's just rotten he's like a zombie Whereas yeah. Michael, I think it's the first movie where like his like this area is kind of exposed, like his like his like neck and like lower chest areas, like and it looks kind of hot. I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, no, I definitely agree with that one. Second rapid fire question: Should I get a BBL? Now, I'll say this: <laughs> Get the BBL if you want to get the BBL. The BBL, not because social media wants you to get the BBL, and also mm-hmm. if you do get the BBL, make sure. You work out your legs enough so that it looks mm-hmm. more natural because the last thing we need is you looking at like a marshmallow on two toothpicks. Or like an ant. Yes. Yeah. yeah like an ant. No, yeah, that's play. that's my thing too. I totally agree. It's just, I mean, no hate to um Nick Minaj, but there have been some like I think it was the Anaconda music video, um, where her legs are so skinny and like her butt, like it looks good, but then it's just when you look at her legs, it's like, oh no, like it doesn't really match. So yeah. like Kim, it's Kim so K important. has that just too. Do, don't skip leg day. Yeah, you can't. I think it's all it's BBLs are a lot of work. I don't think people realize this. Like when you get one, mm-hmm. you like have to work out. You also like can't really sit on your ass for like a month. Like the recovery time is not easy, and mm-hmm. then you have to like keep at it to make sure that it's like it stays you can maintain it because it'll be gone like you can't just get one and then just like be like okay i'm not gonna do anything about it but yeah it's i I think they're cute would you ever get one you know i used to be a twink right and my ass used to be fat when I was a twink. Then I started bulking up and I feel like my proportions like got all wonky. And so I like lost my ass as I gained muscle. Oh, no. And now oh. I'm like, you know, I'm now I'm a little beefier. And I've, I've since then I've had to like work to get the ass back. Can I choose like a smaller BBL? Like I don't need it to be like, I don't need to be walking like a, out a, here. A tasteful one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little one, you know, I just... I want a little, little, not like a full shelf booty, but like just a little, just a little bit. Yeah, I, I think I would get one, like a, a tasteful one though, because I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't have an ass. Like I, my, I don't know what happened at birth, but like my, yeah, I just, I wasn't blessed with a backside. Um, I'm all upper body. Um, but yeah, no, I would totally do that. Do they do something that like can add to your legs too? Like can they add fat to your legs to make them bigger or anything? I would imagine. Like I feel like they have to. If they can do it to your butt, they can do it to your thighs, right? Yeah. Cuz I don't skip leg day and they won't grow. It's so frustrating. See, <laughs> I have nice thighs, but then I feel like I keep working on my butt and I'm like one day she'll get there. She'll get there one yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But yeah. If you're going to get the BBL, know the ramifications do your yes. research and please i'm begging you go to a good doctor don't go to some mm-hmm. some lady who's you know 
down the, the street in some random parlor in the back of a barbershop. No, yeah, no, we don't, no, 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 no. Yes. Yeah. Do your research for sure. That is so important. Mm-hmm. Come on. Going through the proper channels. It's like, do you remember for a while, a bunch of influencers were all getting veneers off TikTok and like not really. Oh my gosh. Into like yes. Veneers, like the shelf life of a veneer is only like 15 years at that. Yeah. Just... And then they're like flying out and stuff now too. Like, mm-hmm. like I saw one, like the Tana Mo, what's her name? Tana Mo, Mojo? T- Mo- Ten- Mar- Tana Margo, something like that. Yeah. yeah, 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 her. yeah. She was like on like a live or something and she like laughed hard and her like thing just like shot out. I was like, holy crap. Like, and then and then like they grind down your old teeth so they're like all sharp and they they look like yeah, yeah like little sharp shark teeth you have like just evil little baby teeth and then they like put yeah. big old horse teeth on top of them it's crazy yeah yeah do your yeah. research y'all yeah please I, that, that goes for everybody do your research <laughs> <laughs> the third rapid fire we have dream collab slash guest oh that's a good one i have two uh, um, no, like, are we talking celebrities? I think it's a dream. Like... It's a dream. Like it, it's this is your dream mm-hmm. guest. Like for me, Kiki Palmer's one. Mm-hmm. I really, I've oh, she I would enjoy be so her fun. podcast, and you know, she's always a good time. Nicole Byer, that's another one. Wait, yeah. I don't know who that is. Am I a bad person? Nicole Byers. <laughs> oh my god, kid? Nicole Byers is a comedian. Have you ever seen Nailed It on Netflix? No. Okay, so Nicole Nicole's great. She was on. Uh, girl code was like how she got her start and then she was doing a bunch of tv and film and other comedy stuff and then she uh started her own podcast why won't you date me which is really really good if you like relationship really podcasts um she's funny she was on a guest on drag race she's a hilarious how i, I if you don't know who nicole Byers i think is, if i seen her i probably Lord. would would know because the the whole like girl coach show that sounds very familiar so I look look her up and you'll be like, oh, her. I know her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's my turn. Um <laughs> I don't know. I think I would obviously probably someone from the horror community. Um uh one of my inspirations for my podcast was um a podcast called Talk Scary to Me, which uh, has Danielle Harris, who plays uh the little girl from Halloween four. Um, I would love to sit and chat with her. That that would be really cool. Um, and also, I probably would want to talk to Jojo Siwa, just because I would want to. I would want to drill her for um, the gay pop remarks. That That's she made. the interview I need. <laughs> yes, I I just want to talk. I think you should just DM her. I th- I have like a feeling that she would do it. Yeah, she I, she seems pretty open to like anything. So maybe mm-hmm. she's. Yeah. I feel like she's <laughs> like a, you know, when like a baby gay first comes out and they're like absorbing everything gay that they can get their like hands on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's like gonna see the word queer in your like Instagram and be like, okay, I'll do it. Sure. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, I didn't even think about it like like that. Oh my god! Maybe shoot your will. shot. Shoot your shot for JoJo. Shoot my shot. Gotta do it. Do it. If you do that, <laughs> I'll shoot my shot with a. Uh, with nicole wait who's nicole nicole byers the one i was just telling you about oh duh oh, okay sorry <laughs> oh or God. actually roz hernandez i would love to uh do an episode with roz hernandez i feel like she would give some really good advice that woman has lived a life also ghosted yeah. is like one of my favorite podcasts what's the podcast called ghosted uh ghosted by roz hernandez she has uh, oh, okay see I, yeah I've, I've heard of that one I yeah that one. fantastic another good one oh my gosh so there's so many good podcasts out. I love them. I there just, really is. I love listening to podcasts. All right, let's get into this update. I love when people send me updates. This is a great reminder. If you have submitted a question at any point over the uh, the life of this podcast and you have an update regarding said question, send it. Uh, you know, give me kind of the basic rundown of what happened last time. If it's been a while and, you know, maybe we forget. And yeah, just give me updates. I love them. This is from last month's episode with Aaron. It is from Sensitive Bitch, and uh, they were the one that me and Aaron had a, a couple questions about because they had a friend who they were drifting apart from. Their friend had got a new partner and kind of like left them in the dust, and uh, yeah, they were trying to navigate not having closure with losing a friend. Mm-hmm. They write, answering the questions you and Frequency had about my issue uh, regarding an ex-friend. 
Number one, we met through mutual friends at a birthday party, strictly platonic. We have quite a few mutual friends. Two, we've known each other for over five years now. Became very close about three years ago, started hooking up about two years ago, which lasted about six months before stopping. The span of <laughs> span was besties and then meh friends and then strangers. That all took place within six weeks after the six month period ended, if that makes sense. Sorry, I don't know how to word it. Makes sense. So they were, they were hooking up about two years ago, which lasted about six months. And then they went from besties to like eh kind of friends and then to complete strangers. Number three, we originally never had intentions to be friends with benefits. Did I want to? Yeah, my friend is hot, but it developed naturally a few years in. Number four, he kind of initiated it. We would sometimes hang out and just take a nap together because we were both tired. And one time while napping and cuddling, he asked if I wanted to give him a hand job. The next few... <laughs> The next few hangouts oh progressed past hand jobs into oral and fucking good for y'all. Dang. <laughs> Number five, I didn't catch romantic feelings for him. I loved hooking up with him and loved him as a friend, but had no intention or interest in romance with this friend. This is because Aaron was like, is there a chance that you could still have feelings with them? And I mm -hmm. said, perhaps actually the opposite. The friend may have had feelings for them. Number six, we stopped hooking up as soon as my friend started dating the new guy. Okay, cool. So they... Because I was also like, are they still hooking up even though they have the new guy? No, they had stopped. Yes, for clarity's yeah, okay. sake, I just want to be friends with him. Sure, I miss hooking up with him, but that was never my main interest. I just miss us being friends. Even if we aren't best friends anymore, I just miss talking to him and occasionally hanging out. Not sure if this info will help you understand or change your mind on what you said at all, but I will say what you answered did help a lot. I hadn't considered that maybe he was pulling apart from me because his new boyfriend might not be comfortable with it. Which, like, in my opinion, that's kind of shitty to do a friend when your boyfriend is insecure. But that's besides the point. I kept looking at it as, quote unquote, well, why am I not important to him anymore? Instead of viewing it as, quote unquote, this is his decision and I likely didn't do anything to cause it, which helps me feel a lot better. Good. I'm glad the advice we gave helps. You know, uh, I, I still stand by it. And I agree with I agree with uh with with sensitive bitch and what they say you know, because the two of them aren't hooking up anymore. So if the boyfriend yeah. is like not comfortable with y'all even hanging out, even though a you didn't start as hooking up, you only like hooked up for like six months, and then b yeah you're platonic now. I just don't see the problem. But maybe that's that's so me. the the I'm I'm just trying to catch the the issue here is they're scared to be friends with them because of they're scared what the the new boyfriend is gonna think or. So that was speculation because we don't know the exact answer why oh, okay, the okay. friend stopped hanging out with them, but it all started to happen after the friend got this new boyfriend, right? So it, it led mm -hmm. me into thinking, well, perhaps that's an option because I have seen that happen before where people are like, yeah, you know, I have a new man and since we've hooked up, you know, I'm not going to talk to you anymore, even if they're not hooking up anymore, which is like, these people were friends first and then were friends after the hooking up was only for, you know set amount of time yeah i'm glad uh i'm glad they i think they could be able. friends that's what i think i like i think they could be friends but evidently the other person doesn't want to be friends with sensitive bitch and yeah i that should probably that should be communicated at, like at like some point i think if they really like care and value this friendship and that's the other thing that aaron and i said we're like it, it yeah you're the other guy should have told sensitive bitch like how they were feeling or how they were going about it but they didn't and also sometimes you just don't get closure from people and it's hard but that's kind of part of our grieving process is having to get past the yeah. fact that we don't have closure you know like i think the biggest yeah, example but, yeah me, it also doesn't hurt to like reach out though and just be like i mean oh, I, that, that could just be me though because i'm like a very aggressive person and i would just be like hey like what 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 happened like what's going on like what did I do or like what's 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 you know like what's happening I, I don't oh my I god <laughs> forget the exact wording they use but I feel like in their original you know I can pull up the original question right now okay I'm trying to process my feelings on a real on a friendship that fell apart this guy and I used to be pretty close to hang out and talk very consistently at one point we were hooking up semi-regularly as well but then they started dating someone and that stopped sure I'm bummed out about losing access to his ass but I get it and don't take that personally but about a month into his relationship, my friend seemed to stop caring about me altogether. I felt like I had to fight tooth and nail just to get an answer to how was your weekend and other basic small talk. Look, I get it. Some friendships don't last forever, and that's okay. I honestly doubted that this boy and I would be friends until the end of time. I expected us to grow apart one day. 
I could see the signs of it being a temporary thing and that's fine. But TBH, my feelings are hurt. I feel like I got kind of shut out of his life all of a sudden and that really gets to me. It wasn't exactly a slow drifting apart. It was great friends, decent friends, nothing in the span of six weeks. That's what they had mentioned in the update. Like I said, I get okay. that not our friendship lost together and I'm generally okay with this friendship not being permanent, but my feelings are hurt in the way that it ended. This is someone I still run into pretty regularly out at the bars and such. Whenever I run into him, it stings and upsets me, and I'm pretty sure this is one-sided, that he doesn't feel the same way, which is fine. I know that this is a me problem, and I get it, but uh, I don't put the responsibility on him for me to get over it. But any tips on getting over it so I can go back to having fun without constantly worrying about running into an ex-bestie? Yeah, so it looks like they were, like, just having trouble even getting a response. And so at that point, I was like, you know, sometimes, sometimes even reaching out is too much, and we'll just, we just have to find a way to, to you know, get over it without on. getting that closure because um uh, for me yeah. so i had an ex who while we were dating and i've talked about this on the pod before while we were dating he was catfishing people online as me and then mm -hmm. basically trying to like slander me through it so he would like paint me out to be a really bad person and mm -hmm. have me say all types of nasty uh derogatory racist things to people and basically like this is while we were together my god and it went on for an entire year of him like and i think part of it was him also collecting people's nudes and and catfishing people using my pictures and spreading my pictures around it was a whole mess so when i like finally hired a private investigator and found out that it was him this was after we had already broken up mm -hmm. uh i didn't i didn't confront him about it i didn't get that closure of being like why did you do this because uh, when you're dealing with a narcissist, it's better to not confront yeah. them because they will continue to lie to you. Uh, I sent him a cease and desist. You know, I got my law stuff in order and that was it. So Period. yeah, sometimes we really just can't get that closure that we want. And it's, yeah. it's hard, yeah. but I think, you know, it is possible to move on from it. It is. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. It's like a therapy session for me too. Cause I, I think that's, that's one thing that I've been um, coming to terms with and like learning is just that like you need to definitely pick your battles and just some things you just have to let go without like any closure and you just have to keep going forward and yeah like do things to keep yourself occupied and yeah just keep it moving because I mean yeah I, I I really wouldn't want someone in my life too who like really isn't putting in effort anyway so yeah it would be one thing if like their friendship started to just apart uh, but he was still like being somewhat communicative with them. Like they could, could yeah. still have a conversation here and there. Cause then it could be like, Hey, I've noticed that we're, we're drifting. Like what, what's, what's going on? Is there a way we can talk about this? But yeah. if like they were having trouble even getting, you know, a response to how's your weekend at that point, it's like evidently uh, yeah. this person doesn't want to talk to you. And that's, Take that your hurts. Time yeah. Spend your time somewhere else. Like, no, that's, that's not worth it. Yeah. And that, that's part of the advice that Aaron and I gave uh, last month. We were like, focus on the friends when you're out and you see this person, you know, focus on you and your girls. You're out to have fun with your people. You're not out to, mm -hmm. to see a bunch of strangers and see someone you don't even like, right? Yeah. You know, focus on yourself. And if you have to talk to him, you know, get a little hey and bye. Don't even have to be a full conversation. Yeah. A little wave. How you doing? Keep it kicking. <laughs> a little <Easy>. wave. <laughs> I love a little wave. You know, get a little wave yeah. on your shoulder shimmy. Okay. Say, oh, you know. <laughs> Nice, nice shoes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that, that's it. it doesn't have to be anything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But thank you for the update, sensitive bitch. I hope things continue to go well. I'm glad that uh, you know, you're helping. You're kind of realizing that this was his decision, and you really mm -hmm. didn't have. It reflects more on him than it did on you. You know. Keep it moving, honestly. Yeah, you're gonna Keep be kicking. better off. Yeah. Fine. There, there's, there's, uh, there's ass everywhere. You know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's everywhere you look honestly yeah so get under someone else <laughs> yeah <laughs> good luck good luck sister <laughs> let us know if anything else happens let's get into the questions for this month this is a good time to say we are not licensed therapists and any advice we give is for entertainment purposes only you know we're just here to shoot the shit uh talk some chisme and um you know shit like that yeah. It's like you're talking to your friend. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. you can talk to your friends and they can give you advice, but you know you're not going to say you're going to unblock him and go back to him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the Oh, that is so true. Facts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get into this first question. This is from JC. 
Jesus Christ. It's a general advice question. And they write, I was recently laid off after working for 17 years nonstop. Oof. I have never, quote unquote, not had a job and I'm contemplating riding this wave of freedom. At the same time, I don't want to get complacent. What advice would you give to someone who is navigating this in a challenging job market? What do you think? Um, I can actually relate to this one. Um, I, uh, I was, I worked, uh, uh, how long did I ever like oh, over like 11 years at a certain beverage company? I worked my way up and then I, one day I just like, I quit. And it, that's like one of the scariest things that anyone can do. Um, so my advice would be to just, I don't know, like just become a hustler somehow because I mean, like, that's honestly what I did. And like, I looked for, um, like self-employment opportunities. Um, I started a podcast. I started just being creative. And I mean, if you really like need it, oh my God, I'm giving the worst advice, but like, if you really, like really need like a, like a job, then I mean, God, I don't know. Like maybe try to look into starting like a business or something, or I don't know, Jake, what do you think? I think I, I have to sit with this a little bit more. You know, I, I'm someone, and I, I might get some flack for this, right? I don't live to work. I work to live. That is always yeah. my belief. I am not somebody who has like, quote unquote, job aspirations. You know, sure, there's jobs that I would like to have and would work towards, right? That being said, those are not my my main goals in life. You know, my main goals mm -hmm. in life, I would love to travel the world. I just love being creative. I would like to continue doing stuff like this. So, Yes. My boyfriend uh, quit his job around the time I first met him. And he was someone similar to this, been working nonstop mm -hmm. all his life. And he, he had this quite literally more or less the same question. Should I ride this wave of freedom? He had the savings. And I'll say this to you. If you have the savings to not work for a couple months and just like, you know, get your head on right, really figure out what it is mm -hmm. that you want to do if you're swapping job markets if you're entering a new field if you're finding ways to you know translate uh, your skills from one job to another take those couple of months you know if you can afford it take those couple of months and really just sort your life out and then mm -hmm. you know hop back into the the market and and uh with a sense of clarity you know because when yeah, do something like traveling and yeah exactly um, one, one of the best things too is um like while you like while you are at a job it's always good to create relationships and just have like kind of leave on good terms like obviously if you get like fired or whatever that's that's different but i don't know i, I think it's always good to have um good connections in the workforce because i mean you can always revisit those later maybe um but yeah like i totally agree with that like if you have like savings or maybe they give you like a certain package when they fire you or something um yeah like life is short you have one life like i yeah that's i don't think i could ever get back into the workforce because it's just i just i i think there's there's so much more to life and i think there's so many more things that could define someone other than your job and like work and all of that. So, I mean, again, life is short, travel the world, do things that you couldn't do while you had this job and mm -hmm. just, yeah, like live your life for you, not some freaking company or whatever. Yeah. I mean, of course the challenging part is fighting to not be complacent. And that's why I think it's good to temper yourself with a plan budget yeah. out kind of the amount that you have what you can spend on if you're going to take a trip you know budget out that week or two for the trip and then think like okay i have this much of my savings i could probably live for this amount of time before i really have to start you know hitting the yeah. ground looking for some cash um so you know live within your means obviously i'm not saying like take take that trip to the other side of the world oh, yeah. spend all your cash <laughs> and go on a walk don't go out, crazy you know? though yeah don't like like definitely yeah take a trip, clear your head. Getting laid off sucks. It is the worst, especially if you've been at a company for a long time and mm -hmm. you feel like this company respects you and then you get laid off and it just feels like, like a slap in the face. Yeah. Um, younger people are more often hopping companies like every two years, you know? And mm -hmm. I think, I think a lot of 
uh, older folk can probably benefit from adopting that mentality when it comes mm-hmm. to companies you know these companies are for themselves they're not for you the worker oh, of course yes. oftentimes they will exploit you and even with even when they're uh, smiling at you they are still exploiting you you know so yeah you ha- kind of have- giving you pizza parties and all this other bullshit besides like stuff you actually need to like live and yeah mm-hmm so yeah, it's uh you got to be a little cutthroat in the way that you deal with companies. You know, assert yourself as somebody, uh, as as a body, especially when you're in these interviews. Once you start looking for work again, but yeah, I, if you yeah. can handle it, definitely take a take a month, take it take a month Go or two. Off. Go off, yeah. JC. Get your shit, get your shit together, clear your mind, sort it out, and just go off. Like do you woo? Yeah, exactly. You don't even have to like go somewhere far. You could just like, you you could just stay at home and just really, you know live your life yeah watch yeah. daytime tv or something i don't know mm-hmm. or if all <laughs> else fails you can do what i did and um start bartending because <laughs> how is bar- that by the way i've always wanted to ask you that bartending is uh yeah. i always talk about the devil's bargain right so it's like the monkey paw your bartending is perfect in the sense that you have quick access to easy money um, yeah. a, a good amount of money but then you know the, the monkey's paw curls, obviously, and the bad part mm-hmm. is you're selling you're selling your weekends. You know you aren't mm-hmm. able to oh. be kind of with like the general populace uh, to do normal people things. You know, like my friend has a birthday party in Miami, and he hit me up about it. And I have lots of feelings about Miami. I don't like Miami, but this is besides the point. It's a little trouble for him to understand that. For everyone else to go to take off a Thursday to a Sunday, like that's fine. But for oh. me, that like is the bulk of my work week. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, I take off a Thursday and a Friday. I'm like, take a long weekend. For me, I'm like, that's the entire week. They're gonna look at me crazy, right? Yeah. But that is the devil's bargain. Uh, and one day I will get back to uh, doing new stuff. That day is not today, though. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy so, yeah, the bartending life. Exactly. I'm I'm a rocket out for a little bit and uh I'm living yeah. for me. So this is this is that. Yeah, bartending is always an option. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck, JC. I yeah. mean, I, I hope you can find something and or just write it out, honestly. I mean, 17 years, that's insane. that's a lot. You deserve a little bit of a break, you know. After 17 years, it's uh it's okay to take a little break. Yeah. Yeah. So good luck. Let us know if uh how things are happening. And you know what? I think a final piece of advice for you is to find a creative outlet. That'll mm-hmm. really, you know, find something that inspires you. Find something that wakes you up in the morning aside from a job. I hate it all. Yeah. I hate when people, when you meet someone new and one of the first questions they ask you is, what do you do for work? Because I'm so much more than what I do for work. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I feel like that. that's sure that tells you what I spend a lot of my time doing, but it tells you nothing about who I am, what I like my passions you know so yeah that's, 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 that's especially too like get, like find like creative outlets because especially like if you just like lose like a job and you're so used to like a routine and like you have like a like this schedule and then i'm pretty sure that's gonna probably be a little bit depressing so i 100%. mean if you definitely don't want to fall into one of those songs i mean you have to do like I don't know, like t- take a writing or st- I'm all start a podcast or just, just something to like, keep you like on like a schedule if you want. Cause mm-hmm. I, I do know some people who like, they have to be on like a, like a set schedule and like, if they're not, they go crazy. Oh, I mean, so. that's, that's me. That's part of why I started podcasting was because bartending yeah. is great, but I was like, I got to a point where I wasn't waking up until like 2 PM and I was just like oh. out all night and my schedule yeah. had like fully flopped. So doing this really uh, affords me that like that rigid kind of schedule to be like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, on Tuesdays, you're going to record this on Wednesdays, you're gonna do some Patreon stuff. You're going to do TikToks on this day and this day, you know, for me, it helps. So yeah, it, you're right. Definitely helps to have a schedule, even when you're not working necessarily. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. Stay busy. Yeah. Good job, JC. And uh, you just like, just like a certain JC, you know, you can, <laughs> you, you'll come back from this. This is, <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is one of the next one. This is from Dragon Feet. It's a sex and love question. They write, do you believe that saying, if you have to wonder if he likes you, he doesn't like you? 
I'm currently in that situation with a guy who does drag. Not that it has anything to do with anything, but he's always busy and blames performing uh, on being much too tired to talk to me. Would you put up with this? Is good dick worth the trouble? Um, this continues um, to prove all drag queens are tops. I don't know. No, I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm just. Maybe I'm just like. I don't know. I don't think so. Like uh, to me, that's a waste of time. Yeah, is I wouldn't that, put up wrong? with this. I would not put up with this at all. It's not yeah, worth it. like life is like I said, life is freaking short, man, and. Like you can't just be putting up with all that. Like, oh, it's that just sounds like a headache, honestly. Such a headache. Yeah, because I I think something that is, you know, pretty salient is like, if he wants to, he'll make the time. Exactly. You like everyone has time. Like, I oh, that makes me so mad. <laughs> I'm getting all mad, but no, because like I like when people say like, oh, I I'm so busy with this or I don't have time. It's like there there's time there even if it's like five minutes two minutes just to write a text like hey what's up hope you had a good day or just i don't know i just think there's a lot of excuses and yeah yeah listen i'm not saying we got to facetime for hours a day right you know exactly exactly a text here a text there on there are some days uh where my boyfriend and i see each other for maybe like 30 minutes because you know we work opposite schedules he works like like a, a day job i bartend so sometimes it really only, is only that like 30 minute crossover you know we catch up on our day real quick and then it's like all right cool i'm gonna work by yeah and that's but it that's but, still but the time, time is made the time is made yeah exactly yeah i don't know i i i do think that if you have to wonder if they like you that they probably don't um I don't know. Do you believe that? Like that, that? That's always true? Or do you think there's there's more to it? No, because I think a lot of people, uh, you know, have have baggage. And just because you're, they're wondering if he likes you doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't like you. Because a lot of times our trauma can help inform how we view relationships with people. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have like the healthiest relationship in the world. And you could still be left wondering if he likes you just based on your experiences that have that formed yeah, you, you know, true. over your entire life. It can go back to even how your parents treated you, you know, like, I don't think necessarily that if just because you're wondering, that doesn't mean that he doesn't like you. Now, I will That's say true. this. He might not view your relationship with him the same way you are trying to view it with him. Uh, he might just see you as like a hookup or someone that he has fun mm -hmm. with or whatever, you know. And so because of that, he might not be putting in the same amount of effort that you are. And it might help for you to meet him where he's at and just just see him as good dick. If that's yeah. all it is, it might help to just do that. You know, get your rocks Detach off those every feelings. once in a while. Yeah, just and you can find that with someone else and and just just fuck with him. But also, has there been some sort of communication? I'm big on communication. That's probably why I keep bringing it up. But like, has there been some sort of like, hey, um, I have these like feelings developing like you know just to be like on the same page because i feel like these situations like they're always like left to like 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 wondering like yeah like, what what's happening so i just it's so important to communicate that is something i i wish i kind of i wish we got a little more of a glimpse into their situation with this person because yeah. all that we know is uh that the this drag queen is busy and blames for forming on being too tired to talk to them so we don't even know, like, are they I don't know the drag dates? queens? Are they just fucking? Which drag queen? Yeah, which drag queen? Which city? <laughs> which scene? Who is it? <laughs> I want to know. Is she a comedy queen? Is she, like, dancing down boots? Like, is that why she can't talk to you? Because she's too busy. Like, she's like, oh, bitch, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the true question. You know, write it, write it with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We need that's an update. update. That's like, the honestly. update we need. Yeah. And yeah. And if you know, we don't have to share the update if you want to give us the name. We could we can share the rest yeah, of the we details. Can keep it, like on the on the DL. Yeah, we'll, 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 you know. we'll share the rest of the names, then we'll share the every other detail the, the viewers could get, but you just want to tell us the name. You know, that'll be between the yeah. three of us. I I genuinely want to know now. I'm yeah. <laughs> well, I'm curious. You know, it's RuPaul. That's that's who it is. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Imagine day, that would be crazy. Damn. Oh. That'd be like, oh yeah, it's an NDA. That's why you can't sell this. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god.
if you guys are closer than I am, because the way I'm reading it, I it doesn't sound like they're super close to me. It just sounds like they are mm-hmm. casually seeing each other. I wouldn't even say yeah. necessarily dating or in the talking stage. Um, but if you guys are closer, then it's definitely worth the conversation. But if you guys are like yeah. just hooking up every so often, then I would just try to detach yourself, meet him where he's at, and then focus on other people for romantic options because evidently this is someone you're not as romantically compatible with. Yeah. But you might be very sexually compatible and you can have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, that is an option. That is an option. Just have to like learn how to detach those feelings just to, I mean, if they're not going to, I don't know. I Maybe that's just me being toxic. No, um... Uh, like no <laughs> let's talk about it let's talk about it <laughs> just play the, the same game honestly what jake said play that same game because i mean if it's not getting you anywhere like having these feelings or whatever then yeah just if the dick is that good then i mean just you know keep it just a dick appointment or something i don't know yeah and it's not even that like it, you have to play the same game or you you could just have the same expectations that he's having with you you know and some people yeah. are just meant to, to you know just hook up it doesn't mean you have to marry them you know um and that's okay however i because my thing is if they're already like you know blaming performing on the reason that they can't talk or whatever if you come to them and you're like hey i really like you why don't we talk more they're just oh, like yeah. oh, girl i just don't have time for them then they're really gonna drop you you know <laughs> yeah yeah that would be really embarrassing actually yeah unless you guys are way closer than you're letting on and then in that case we don't have context we need i know we we need we need more context i i would love to hear an update with more context yeah Um, yeah because that really kind of helps decide the route to take here because if this is me and it's just like someone that i'm kind of hooking up with and i'm like yeah i have a crush on this person i would just be like "Eh, we're just not that compatible we're just gonna fuck and that's okay yeah yeah and are you tipping this drag queen when they're performing that's not no. real question <laughs> tip these queens tip, tip them. these queens yeah tip, tip them. them listen she's she's tipping you in the bedroom so you better tip her yeah. back <laughs> you're getting just the tip or what yeah like, tip, tip shout them. all of it they're getting off it. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's move on to this next one but for real send an update i'm curious uh, the next one's and from good May. Fl- yes, good luck. May Flowers. It's a general advice question, and they write. So I know this might sound cheesy, but May is Mental Health Awareness Month. What are some things that calm you down when you're feeling anxious? What helps you? Hmm. Do you feel anxious often? If you can tell, I'm a very anxious person. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm really um, emotional. Uh, um. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I think l- lately I've just been, um, I've been writing a lot that, that like r- writing helps me. Um, obviously like I'm not a professional, but I mean, if it, if it's like really like that intense, then I mean, I would say if you aren't already, uh, to seek, you know, professional assistance. Yeah. That, that's always but, yeah, like, the first um, thing, I, seek if, professional if like, help. What happened? That's always the first thing is seek professional Oh help, no. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, if 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 it's like really, really, really like bad and just like awful, then yeah, that's always option one. Um, but I mean, if you're just like you know like casually anxious, I I write a lot, and that that helps me calm down. Or um, video games, you know, like like you can do some first person shooters to take out some aggression, stuff like that. It's a big. One what about you? Gaming is for is probably the big gaming. One. Gaming, yeah. uh, for me, working out, you know, is a very easy way to release endorphins, even mm-hmm. if it's just like a jog down the street or just taking a walk, um, getting in touch with nature, I always find too, especially living in the city. I feel like it's really easy to lose touch of that. And so for me, yeah. like, getting somebody somewhere with trees really just helps clear out my, like, anytime I'm feeling anxious, I'm like, I just need to be like with the earth, you know? Um, but then, of course, on the literal opposite side, I'm like, I just need to turn my brain off put on a video game and just you know just let it rip <laughs> yeah yeah but like I, I mean i don't i don't want this to sound like controversial or anything but also I, I i do think it's it's okay to feel certain certain feelings i mean i mean we're not robots we are all human and um it, it just goes back to if if it just gets so 
debilitating, then that's when you should seek professional help. But um, I mean, don't be afraid of it. I mean, it, there's there's always outlets to, you know, um, take that out on you. Like we said, gaming, writing, um, there's so much working out. But but yeah, I, I, I think there's like, a, there's some people who are like, afraid of it. And um, like, are, are kind of scared to like, feel that. Does that make sense or no? I'm not. I'm not no, that makes a lot of sense. And I do want to, I want to say this, like when we're talking about anxiety, when it relates to this question, we're not talking about like medically diagnosed anxiety, right? Because obviously that yeah. requires, you know, working with a therapist and a psychiatrist and everything. And I like, I hate those like pop psychology books that are like, you can fix your therapy by looking at this, you know, like, and it's like, you know, sure. Meditation can only take you so far, but when you have debilitating anxiety, you know, like you need to seek professional help. Right. Yeah. So th I think that's like a good way. We obviously talking about that, but I think you're correct. Feelings uh, are meant to be felt. If you're feeling anxious, sometimes it can help to sit with it and try yeah. to bottom out. Like, or figure kinda, out why, but why exactly. Yeah. And there's, I forget what podcast I was listening to that taught me this. Um, there was a psychiatrist or a therapist on, they were talking about like, this process called bottoming out where you're like, I'm feeling anxious because of blank. And then you, you know, you leave the bottom out and you're like, okay, why am I feeling anxious because of blank? And then why that because of blank. And you kind of distill it down to like the reason why you're feeling away. And so just sitting with it and really thinking about why you're feeling this way uh, can help, you know, get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think you're, 100% correct sometimes it is okay to sit with the feeling even if it's not a yeah. good feeling I think just because it is a negative uh emotion doesn't mean that we should immediately ignore it or find escapism or try to get out of it you know yeah because then that's bad too using escapism that's could be a whole other problem and mm -hmm. we don't want that yeah because then yeah. you're relying on the escapism and then you're ignoring how often you're feeling anxious or how often you're feeling uh -huh. depressed or you know so yeah percent yeah uh, I, I actually didn't know that may was that, hair, i didn't know may was a uh, mental health awareness month oh yeah yeah may's mental health awareness month oh. yeah i i yeah. actually just learned that too when i heard that question <laughs> look at that may flowers is teaching us <laughs> right we're yeah. being schooled right now exactly well thank you for the question may flowers and uh feel free to set an update with what, what helps you, what helps calm you down as well. I, or anyone else, if you want to share, hit me up on the Instagram, yeah. you know, DM me some stuff. I would love to hear, you know, cause I'm always looking for, for new things. Mm. This question is from Jasper. It's a general advice question. And they write, I've been hitting up some clubs for a while now, you know, but honestly, I feel like I'm lost in this whole gay scene. I'm 27 and still struggling to make new friends, let alone find love. I'm shy and I struggle to approach people. Every time I go out, I hope to connect with someone, but I end up feeling more lost and lonely. Plus, making friends feels like another challenge altogether. Any advice for someone like me who's been around the block but still feels lost in the gay scene when it comes to making friends? Hmm. Did I submit that? Did I submit that? Oh my I, gosh. A, a lot of people could have submitted this one. This is a very common feeling. Yeah. And I, th I think that that fact alone can help you the fact that you're not the only person feeling lost here you know because making mean, friends is tough and we talked about that uh i talked about that with aaron during our, our reddit stories episode two weeks ago making friends is it, it takes bravery to like yeah. go up to someone and be like hey be my friend you know <laughs> i wish it were that easy um yeah it no, can I, be uh, i have I've... definitely done it before where i've been like girl be my friend <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah a hundred percent it has worked i've been like you're my friend now and we're oh, gonna period. you know hey diva period. let's be friends <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> i don't know as like um I, I i swear this sounds like something that i would have submitted in um but yeah I, I i deal with that a lot so i can relate to you on that um and this is probably one of the reasons why i i i don't like to go out um but I don't know how I would approach that. I, how would you? I'll say this. So they mentioned that they're shy and they struggle to make friends. And I don't think that everybody needs to be, you know, a callejero out on these streets, you know, being the extrovert. That's not yeah. for everybody. And that's okay. Yeah. If, if you 
make friends online through online communities you're in a discord you know you're like watching twitch streams and finding friends that way that is perfectly valid to find friends online right or even if you're joining like smaller local clubs you know maybe like a like a D, &D group or uh even some drag shows that are like more community based and Mm-hmm. focus Yeah. on uh finding people there because people at that those types of events tend to be like very nice and easy to talk to and that might help ease you in but also if you have like one friend that you can trust to go out with you that alone Mm -hmm. you know having that like shoulder uh that like that safe space to like you know like, let's Lean go out on, yeah. let's go out me and you and we're gonna we're gonna try to make some friends right uh sometimes that's what it takes just like one one friend. also my, my circle is pretty small like I really only have four or five re really close friends. I know a lot of people Mm -hmm. and I'm friendly with a lot of people, but, uh, you know, I keep the people that I really, really like pretty, pretty tiny, but, um, Yeah. 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 Um, or maybe like try a bar. Maybe it's like, is it like the like club scene that's like too overwhelming? Like, or like try like a smaller setting possibly. Um, I I don't don't know. know. Yeah. Cause I, I talking to someone in a club is always really tough. You can't hear nothing. And, Oh my god. you know, then you got people <laughs> That's yelling like one in of your the main ear. I I I already can hear. So like when I when I'm in a club and someone's talking to me, I'm I'm always like, What? Huh? Uh, Wait, what? It's so embarrassing. And they're like, Are you deaf? I'm like, I just I can't hear. It's so loud. it's hard. But Yeah. Especially like if yeah. you, if you have like a lower deep voice and then your voice just doesn't travel as far and Mm-hmm. then you're like trying to get it into someone's ear. You're like, it's just, we're being misunderstood. You know, we just can't hear each other. <laughs> so yeah, Yeah. a club might not be the best place, you know, but uh, if you're like really trying to go out somewhere locally and get it, but yeah, bar could help or look out for bar events, like specific things like a trivia night or let me tell you the people at trivia night, those girls could talk. You don't even have Yeah. to do all the lifting there. The girls will talk to you. Trivia night or a smaller drag show, like I said, or Yeah. um, there's a bar. Or even like other events too, no? Like aren't isn't there like I don't know, like um, I'm pretty sure there's uh, there's a club where I live where they they do like Mario Kart at the at the gate club. It's like a small group of guys and they get together and just play Mario Yeah, Kart, that's like what stuff I was about like to that. say. Yeah, I was going to say the local, uh, there's a bar near me that does like games every first Thursday of the month or something Yeah. like that. Yeah, So like there's I, I there's think maybe look for there's more specific options events. than yeah. Yeah, because going out on a Friday, you know, that might be a little, a little more daunting Oh yeah, and overwhelming, harder to talk to people. intimidating. Yeah, than like on a Wednesday night where they're doing uh, karaoke or bar trivia or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, Because that sounds I feel like fun. Maybe I should go out during the week then. you should. I love going Going out during on the Fridays. week. I love, especially because I can't go out during weekends because of my job. On weekends, yeah. During the week is great. There's always good stuff during the week. And it, it's like it's like not as busy either. I'm sure, right? Oh yeah, no. I mean, like there are some events that definitely draw crowds and stuff. But for me, I feel like the times where I've talked to the most strangers have been when I go out during the week. Maybe just like me and another friend. And we're, you know, like either at game night at a bar or at trivia or at karaoke. And then, you know, we're like next to someone at the bar, we just strike up conversation with them. And that takes courage. And that is something that you just have to like dive into. And not every conversation is going to go great. I have Yeah. fumbled loads of conversations. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be some awkward ones. Yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Because a lot, oftentimes people are drunk and, you know, they're really They not won't going remember. to, yeah. They're not going to be like, oh my God, there's that, that weirdo that asked me how the weather was, you know, like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just don't overthink it. Don't Yeah. overthink Mm -hmm. it and just, you know, shoot your shot and just, just go for it. Yeah. Shoot your shot. Say hi to somebody, you know. Um, it's tough, but part of being brave is knowing that we're gonna be okay. Yeah. So As a, as a bartender, do you get a lot of people who like go up to you and just like make small talk or just try to get to know you more? yeah, Like, that's another thing. If you're at a bar and it's not super busy, um, try talking to the bartender. Just to, like yeah. practice conversation. I have people constantly just like just like making idle small talk with me or asking me about how it is working out there. Um, I do get a lot of a couple weirdos, but you know, that's that's another thing because I work at a bar with go-go dancers. So a lot of people are often like, why are you dancing up there? And and then I have to make like a joke, like, oh, I'm waiting for my credit to take a hit, you know? Like <laughs> 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 that's a good one that's a good That's one right there that's my usual go-to. They're like, why aren't you dancing? And I was like, I'm waiting on my credit <laughs> to take a hit. Yeah. I'm like, wait, wait period till I pay off this next loan, then you'll see me up there.
<laughs> yeah. Period. But yeah, I, talking to a bartender is actually that's that's uh, I mean, they're obviously not every bartender is going to be as friendly or as oh, yeah. uh, you know as nice as I am, you know. But <laughs> if yeah. the bartender is open to being talked to and the bar isn't super busy, like don't talk to the bartender when they're like swamped and there's 800 there's like people, so at many people at the bar at the bar yeah like asking for drinks yeah i know yeah but Read if the they room. have a little time you know and they're just like you know wiping glasses down or whatever sure strike up a conversation how long have you worked here blah, blah, blah. and the more conversations you have the better that you get at it that that's yeah. the truth of the matter this it takes practice yeah yeah it's did i even answer the question i feel like i didn't answer the question I'm, I went let's really let's break this down right okay cool I'm shy and I struggle to approach people. We hit that. We, we, okay, we yeah. help them out with that. And I think a lot of that is stepping outside of your comfort zone. A lot of people don't like to do it. I don't uh -huh. like to do it all the time, but it is helpful. And once you get a little more comfortable stepping outside your comfort zone, you know, you can push yourself a little more. And I'm not saying you have to be, like I said, the extrovert because not everybody has to do that. Yeah. Uh, and if you try and you're like, that was terrible. I don't want to do that again. Then you know maybe we just stick to making friends at the smaller events and on discord and you yeah. know uh things like that if you, if you want to practice conversations i have a discord if you ever pop into a church room of mine you can join uh, lots of friendly gay people in there uh talking about pokemon and resident evil and tv shows and comic books and whatever else i need pops, the link you know. to this I, i'll link that you sounds to like it. a good time i'll link you to it we, we have a it's a few it's a cute we are small but mighty you know small, yeah mighty. yeah sounds like a good time let's see what else uh every time i go i hope to connect with someone but I end up feeling more lost and lonely i feel like the the good part to that that we covered is go out with at least one person that you can trust to yeah. be your safe space right like your and, your bestie yeah or something. yeah and making friends feels like another challenge altogether i feel like we covered that as well i feel like we Okay, we I, I, okay. I I just wasn't sure because I my brain is like I told no. you tangent. I'm I'm like no. Tangent. Listen, I love a tangent, and we we may have had a little more of a roundabout approach to it, uh, but we, I think well, we tackled think it we like like a pin cushion. You know, just keep attacking it from every point. Boom. Every angle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But Jasper, send us an update. Let us know how things are going. Uh, and for really, if you just want to send send me a message in the DM uh, for the the show and be like, hey, can I get your Discord? You know, talk to people there. Sometimes we're uh, in the voice chat, you know, playing games. Sometimes we're just in the text chat, you know, saying some you know, shooting the shit. But yeah. <laughs> like the only way to get better at conversations is to practice it more. Yeah. yeah. It's like a muscle. Your muscle is only going to get bigger if you just keep, you know, keep doing it. Keep exactly. practicing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to build, and it's, it's also building up confidence. Yeah. Yeah. That's really hard to do, but it, it, it can be it done. Is. It can be done. It's, so it, it's a slow process and it takes time. Uh, and it's not like you're going to have one conversation and be like, all right, bitch, I'm ready to be, you know, I'm ready to be uh, Wendy Williams. <laughs> She's going back yeah. to Wendy. The host of the Poison Touch podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you know. And I'll say this. When I started bartending, I was definitely worse at making small talk with people. I've gotten pretty good at it now. Mm -hmm. Uh I do still think I am an ambivert in the sense that if I'm like not working and I don't want to have a conversation, I'm just not going to make a conversation. But if yeah. someone comes up to me to make conversation and they like, I will put effort into keep it going. That's, that's, I think that's also the, the other part, but I won't necessarily always be the person going up to start the conversation. But sometimes I do, you know, give me a little caffeine in me. I might. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I'm complete opposite. I think no one approaches me because i look so unapproachable in in person it's it's kind of sad yeah i don't know what it is and i'm like i'm not a i'm not a bitch and like in person i'm like really nice i just i think it's my face because i'm always just like i look so serious or something or but yeah i i i am the same so way when i'm not working like when i don't have to put on my like customer service smile you know yeah <laughs> like i do have resting bitch face and i have people told me that like i am a little intimidating like just looking at me but the thing is like once once I start talking, you hear like the purse fall out of my mouth and you're like, oh, that's. <laughs> Did you just say the purse fall out of your mouth? Yes. Uh, you hear the purse oh fall out of my, my mouth. God. You hear the rainbows uh, come out. You better like... copyright that because I'm. that's a good, I have oh my God. Is... I trust me. I did not come up with it. I don't know who did, but I heard it. Once I've never heard like, that. Yeah. 
you know wow that took that was good mm-hmm. and i feel like a lot of divas are like that that you, you look at them you're like oh my god she looks so mean then they talk you're like oh actually you know they yeah they're they're fine they're that, they're good that's people. a care bear you know <laughs> yeah literally yeah <laughs> all right well that brings us to the end of the questions for this we uh this month's episode we are going to take a quick break and we're going to get into our second segment advice to the stars where we're going to talk about some uh some celebrity bullshit try to help out the people that uh didn't ask for our advice but uh damn well need it we are back from our break with ralph anthony from the scream queer podcast how you holding up i'm having a great time actually like i'm yeah. this is so fun i'm glad i know i know uh my podcast can run a little long sometimes, you know, I've been lately, I've been pretty good about keeping it under two hours. I mean, I've been pretty good about it, but I always want to, you know, check in with the guests to be like, we're doing good. We're holding up. No. Yeah. It's, it's so fun. It's um, I think it's just so different. Cause like mine, I mean, I usually keep it like 20 minutes unless I have a guest, but no, no, I, I just like love the conversation. And these, these questions are some of them are pretty challenging. Like I, I feel like I'm not giving my best advice, but I'm doing my best. But no, it's, it's fantastic so fun so advice. I feel I feel like you're giving really good advice. Don't uh, g- give yourself some more grace. That's my advice to you. <laughs> more, yeah, yeah. I gotta go easier yeah. on myself. Yeah. But no, it's it's so fun. So thank you again yeah, for having I'm, me. I'm having a good time. We are here with our second segment, advice to the stars, where uh, you know, like I said, we give advice to celebrities that didn't ask for it, but damn well need it. And the first thing that I wanted to cover, because I know how much of a stand you are, because I remember your episode where she made her rebrand and you talked about it. We're talking Jojo Siwa following this SNL skit. Okay, Did it you- was spot on. It was spot on. I just, <laughs> they, she did such a good job in this skit. It was really good. Like, like It was great. From like the, the makeup. The, even the voice. That damn, yes, the, dance like, move. The choreography. Yeah. Like, yeah. For yeah. those of you, it was, uh, it was yeah, it the was audio spot on, version. and they even like did some like digs at her with the whole gay, like she invented gay pop, and that's the bulk of what I want to tackle is the gay pop situation. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have so many thoughts about this. To me, Jojo Siwa comes off as someone. And I'm trying to be kind about it. And I'm trying to be kind about it. Kind of what I said earlier, we're like, they're kind of new to the gay lifestyle and mm-hmm. trying their best to absorb everything. But to me, it feels like Jojo Siwa might be a little cocky about it in the sense that she is trying to do all the gay things, but not necessarily acknowledging where she's coming from Mm -hmm. where you know queer history has been especially when she talked about how she invented this new genre called gay pop as if we don't have you know even just the most recent you know like kim petras a trans pop star out here doing the damn thing sophie uh if we we go back to the sylvester doing uh queer disco and disco itself is always full of, of queer icons and to just say that you've invented a genre called queer pop just feels to me a little short sighted uh yeah yeah Yeah, and i'm just like first of all she wasn't my favorite on on dance moms just putting that out there um she gives she's giving like i would not pick me vibe, but she's just giving like like she first came out so now like i feel like she's she's just she's trying so hard to like prove to everyone that she is like gay and that she is like this i don't know I she's just doing too much and she needs to pick up a book and like honestly do her research and because that I feel like she's like kind of shitting on like all the hard work that has come before her and you know because there's so many other like artists out there like who didn't have it as easy just like Kamala Harris said you think you fell out of a coconut tree You think you fell out of a coconut tree. You are the product of everything around and before you, you know, and yeah. as silly as that quote is, and as much as no, the Biden administration it's... is doing a goddamn mess right now, I will stand by that quote. <laughs> Did you think you fell out of a coconut tree? Because the way she's talking about this gay pop stuff sounds like she fell out of a coconut tree. 
yeah that that quote eight like eats right now so i mean yeah mm -hmm. like it's it it's so true it's so true and yeah and just she's very cocky and i don't know i to me like that like that makes i'm gonna sound like a like an old man here but like people like her like kind of like what make me like nervous or kind of like scared because i mean i don't want that to like be like all people see as like from our community you know like because i don't know like that's i yeah i i, I hope not and i i should i would hope that with all the visibility that we have people could look past jojo siwa and you know cara <laughs> delavine being like annoying <laughs> and go to like you know go to the cool queers go to the cool queers we're out here yeah yeah and she's also not the first like child star to like do that i mean there was miley cyrus and you know like selena gomez and there, like there's so many people and like just I, I feel like she's just saying that she's like the first to do like all of it i'm like girl you've literally listed miley as an inspo and but you're still saying that you're like one of the, the first yeah. Like no one's seen that much of a dramatic like change or I don't know. It's a little uh Columbus-y in the aspect, you know, of being like, I found this, I discovered it. Meanwhile, there yeah. were already like tons of people here, you know, who have paved the way. Yeah. My advice to Jojo Siwa is to go to a, your local <laughs> record store and pick up every Alanis Morissette record that you can find. Oh my god, yes really live that lesbian life go listen to some of Lana's more so yeah and, and please yeah, like this honestly. makeup i'm begging we don't we don't have to do this makeup no no oh yeah i mean ugh, i feel like i feel so bad but <laughs> i i've never been a fan i just i don't know it's just it's obnoxious to me <laughs> like i mean I, i'm I don't know like the whole like ponytail and the star thing like that that was cute but I don't I just think just like doing the whole like the the kiss makeup from uh, it, it's just it's trying it's doing too much you've it's seen Ghostbusters or no which one the first one the first one I think I've seen the second one only why oh, what no does she look like a monster from there she like looks like Gozer the Gozerian the <laughs> that like are they in the second one is, she's the first one goes the gozerian uh, yeah i'm gonna have to google that <laughs> i'll send you a picture but I that's who jojo this. siwa looks like is jojo uh goes the gozerian <laughs> i just imagine a universe right because it made sense when jojo was appealing mostly to children and was like mm -hmm. doing the high pony and the stars and you know that kind of dress it makes sense yeah. your uh your main audience is kids you're aiming toward that. Imagine a world where Jojo Siwa, you know, didn't come out like Ghost of the Gozerian and dressed just like an adult. It would have been equally as shocking because we're so used to seeing her dress like a child. Yeah. To just have her in some contemporary, you know, adult clothing. And I'm not saying go like, it doesn't have to be a rebrand like Miley did, because I also think there's some trouble with that and her oh, just yeah. co-opting co Black culture to separate herself uh, from her Disney persona. The bangers era? Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes, which we did get some bangers out of that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but, but the, the era is a little, yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, but I think there's a way for her to just show us, I'm an adult, I'm doing new things, I'm making music, uh, I'm doing my thing. Like, show us that you're an adult without doing this <laughs> it's a lot yeah like she could have just like put her hair down and you know like like you said like wore some you know like more adult clothing and yeah. but i don't work. know she just wanted to go full yeah. on like work with your team to get you some like red carpet bookings where you can wear like an adult dress you know like yeah. i'm not saying you gotta be like the met gala but like storm reed is a young actress you know, and everyone was so used to seeing her as like, you know, the baby sister and a lot of things. And you see her at this Met Gala and you're like, that is such a young woman. She's growing up. So mm -hmm. like, she looks gorgeous. It, it, it could have been something like that, you know, where we see yeah. Joja and we're like, oh my God, I remember when she was, you know, doing all this kitty stuff and look at her now she's grown, you know? Yeah. Or, or like, if that's not her vibe, like maybe she could have done this like really, I don't know. Like, I think women look hot when they, when they wear suits, like she could have done like, like, yeah, like, give suit, a power like, suit. 
And yeah. I, it, it, that can even have a sequin in it. I'm not, I'm not saying abandon the sequins. I love a sequin. I love a sparkle. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I just think the, the, I'm going to be dark and edgy, but it's not even like dark and edgy, you know, like, I think that is uh, not the best step. Yeah. You know? It was, it was a miss. And then there was like a bunch of controversy on that song too. Right. Yeah, because she, I don't even know like the full story, so I don't necessarily want to like. She like took it from some girl who recorded it. I don't know the girl's name, but she recorded it in like 2010 and like with Timbaland and. Yes. Which, I mean, when I heard the song, I was like, this sounds like something from like the 2010 era, like with when Gaga first came out and Katy Perry. It it like sounds, it sounds very dated. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Brit Smith was the singer. So she released it uh, in, you know. 2012 and now like people have been going back and listening to her so she like actually released it again and so now yes. people are like i feel like the, the handling of this could have been completely different yeah yeah I, I think even on on like itunes it was like it like beat jojo's version on like the itunes charts or something and i'm just like oh my god that's that's kind of embarrassing yeah i just uh this this was a mess for a rebrand and I'm all for celebrities yeah. doing rebrands, you know? You want to reinvent yourself, you want to be different, you want to change your your audience. I get that. I think we need to workshop this one a little longer. Yeah. And as someone who's done so many rebrands, <laughs> I've done a lot of rebrands in like the That's last how I should have introduced and... you. I should have said the king of rebrands. <laughs> I'm literally the king of like rebrands. I'm so ridiculous. I'm just never happy with with what I have, but my best advice for for JoJo would just to be just go back to the drawing board, you know, rethink, rethink how you want to go about things and, you know, come back and like, because like, this isn't it. Like she can come back. Like, like we said, just a less obnoxious and a less, uh, I would, I would say tone deaf. Um, just do your history, yeah. like do some reading, know your history and come back and then we'll, we'll go from there. But this cocky and i'm this i'm the first that it's it's it yeah i don't know it's, it's like a slap like, in the face and i can appreciate a degree of cockiness right but this is like cockiness veering on like pretentious mm-hmm. attitude you know in a way that's just yes. like kind of off-putting yeah which is yeah. like um someone else who did that a lot was uh uh billy eichner Billy Eichner is somebody who like you know so when his movie Bros came out and he was like this is the first gay rom com oh blah, blah, okay, blah, okay, okay. I was like I know that that name yeah. I used to love Billy on the Street Billy on the Street was fun you know it was fun I always found him annoying but I will say there were some fun times with Billy <laughs> on the Street but like when when the whole Bros rollout was happening and he was like if gay people don't see this they're homophobic and blah it was like cocky no. and pretentious in a way that just off put everybody from being like I'm you know, I want to see this. And I, it just did not. I didn't even oh, watch it. I didn't watch it either. I didn't watch it. Especially when quite literally maybe the best uh, gay rom-com came out that same year in the form of uh, Joel Kim Booster and uh, in Fire Island. Because Fire I've Island was great. That. That's on Hulu and I would highly recommend. It's kind of like a, uh, a parallel, like gay retelling of Pride and Prejudice. It like follows a lot of those same oh. story beats. Um, yeah so yeah it's really good I highly recommend that i i need a full list by the end of this recording I, I, you know i'll put it so far we've got a why won't you date me nicole byers you know we've got fire yeah. island joe Kim booster uh, <laughs> that's another dream dream collab joe Kim booster because he used to have an advice podcast which is like part of the reason why i started mine because i was like oh god i miss hearing you know all the messy stories on his podcast yeah uh, and um, you know that that would be great. <clears throat> All right, next up on the list, I want to talk a little bit about these college protests. And I know this isn't literally you know celebrity related, but oftentimes we talk about public figures and people in positions of power. So this is more so directed at politicians and and there's varying degrees of things happening around the country. But I think specifically what I've been seeing, just because I am in Chicago, for me has been uh, the protests at UIC, which have been happening for, you know, like over a week, a bunch of students camping out on the school's main quad. And the University of Chicago is like a, a college that has always touted students' rights to free speech, which is, is good, you know, in theory, right? You know, they put out like a, a declaration of free speech, ensuring the rights of all their students and blah, 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 blah. 
Yeah. Then this past week, they were like, okay, you can protest, but all these tents got to be out by, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then urging them and then sending police in, of course, and everything turned into a mess. So the advice here is not just for politicians in Chicago, but around the country, because, you know, obviously I can't cover every single college protest, but yeah, these students are putting themselves on the line to, uh, fight the good fight and promote what they believe is right and i'm standing with them and for you as a president of a school to proudly tout how you're for students free speech and then in that same breath take that away from them because they're you know because they have tents on the lawn it's just so hypocritical and it's just such a cheap shot And it's like trying to be the good guy. You know what I mean? Uh Like, oh, you know, I still support it, but, you know, we just can't support it that much. That's the thing about protesting. It's not supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be disruptive. It's not, oh, no, let's, you know, we're just going to go out with a picket fence and say in this tiny little circle, you're supposed to disrupt, you know, hegemonic structures, supposed to get in the way of, you know, university practices, you know, blocking roads, blocking down highways and things like that. It's supposed to be disruptive. That is the point. You want people to see you. You want people to hear you. You want to get the message out there. And I just think if the University of Chicago is really about their shit, they should fully be just letting the students do their thing and ensuring that the students' uh, rights are respected. But shout out to everyone who is protesting and, you know, putting their voice out there. It's important. And be safe, you know, to cover your faces, you know, yeah. Don't post pictures. Was the University locations. of Chicago, were they one of the ones who were taking away like graduation and stuff too? I'm not sure I about that. I remember, that I know some were like threatening to take away uh, graduation certificates and things like that. And yeah, one school was like threatening to take away and they like walked out uh, a student who walked across the graduation stage with a, I, I don't know the, the correct way to say it, a kefaya, like the, the scarf, the Palestinian yeah, scarf. Yeah. They like escorted her out the building and were threatening to take away her degree just because just and she wasn't even like fully like she walked across the stage just with that scarf and they like took her out from that like that that's bonkers to me that wasn't disrupting anything exactly it's showing support and uh and it like i just to me it's just pain like i can't even like form a complete thought because my brain is just like why like turn it on turn it on that's all i can say turn it on oh my god yeah yeah i I mean if it is a it like if tents upset them that much <laughs> to just then i mean that should tell you right there like the like one of our biggest problems if if tents are that uh, upsetting to this university like i mean this is america right like are we supposed to have freedom of speech or like you know like is that but is that like the, the first amendment i could am i yeah it's the first amendment it's like yeah. yeah like so like i mean they're they're doing that it's their right so i mean I, I really don't see the issue with these universities it's just it's i don't know it's just i think everyone is just so, like those big like big corporations and like the the schools are just like they're they're so scared to like voice anything and i don't know they they like to stay like neutral and, and it's like y'all you know you have these bigger voices but you aren't using them yes. and i think that's why people are so upset and just angry mm, it's, it all goes to like money right like you're you want to stay neutral and you want to not say anything because you're afraid of losing sponsors you're afraid of getting money from these like big corporations or you're you know you have a super PAC involved if you're like in a, you're a mm-hmm. political space you know and that is it's like this goes beyond the money right you know Mm -hmm. this is about people's lives and i think the reason why we're focusing so much on college students specifically over these past you know week or two is uh israel just burned down all the colleges in gaza you know like like there are no schools over there left anymore so students here are taking to their campuses to protest and you know get out that way so yeah there are no schools left over there you know like yes we're going to disrupt the schools here these protests deserve to happen. These students deserve to, you know, be out there and protesting. And for people who are like kind of counter protesting, it's like weird to me because they're making it seem like 
they're the victims when in reality, like most of the world is on Israel's side, tragically. You know what I mean? Like they're just yeah. aiding and abetting war crimes. Like you're when you're setting up a counter protest, you're not saying much, you know? <laughs> like, you're not yeah. for anything. You're like for the the global superpower. And like, do you really want to stand with that? Like it's just I want you, I want everybody, and this this is, like I said, not advice to the stars, but advice to, you know, the people in power and the people, but like, let's do some research. Let's really listen to what people are saying. And I hate, 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 hate this video I saw the other day. This guy going around asking people like what what they're protesting for and what are you standing for, but doing it in such a way as like trying to get a gotcha moment of being yeah. like nobody will talk to me you know when in reality at protest I I did see something like that. have you seen this because at protest right you're not necessarily supposed to talk to cameras you're mm -hmm. you know official words come from the organizers of the event you know they have to yeah. follow a very specific protocol for that so to like go around and try to like antagonize people who are you know putting themselves in harm way for this and then use it as a gotcha to be like they're just out here because they're woke and they don't know what they're protesting and blah blah it is just such bullshit to me oh my god get a grip yeah yeah i i, I seen a video similar to that i think of where this guy asked um like this girl like what what is she out there for and she couldn't give him an answer and it was just kind of like i don't know it was kind of mean-spirited because I mean, I I don't think she knew. I think she was out there with a with a friend, like being supportive. And um, but he was kind of just like, oh yeah, like gotcha, like this is like this is what I'm talking about, like you know. And it was just, I don't know, I I I I don't see how that is helping them in their argument, whatever argument they're it, trying to have to. It literally, like it's, it's I don't know. It's just making I don't know. I think I I think it's just like making things worse and. I don't I don't know it's yeah it and, and sucks, like like all of this the thing about protesting sometimes is like yeah sure not everybody's going to know 100 percent the the byline point for point on what our demands are what we're protesting but to even have you know a couple friends come out with you and and help you support this cause and know like sure the general reason of like why this is you know what you're out there for that alone is enough. Having bodies is having power. Having bodies is having yeah. safety. You know, putting yourself in that that picket fence, in that picket yeah. line, right, alongside other people, putting themselves on the front lines like that. Like that is important. I don't think it's like a gotcha to be like, oh, they don't, they don't know the whole, you know, girl. <laughs> post your little TikTok video. About, yeah. I hate anytime I see a lavalier mic, bitch. I'm running the other way. I live in constant fear of walking in downtown Chicago and seeing someone come up to me with a little mic. I'm running. I'm <laughs> running. Don't ask me shit. Yeah. And I think that, that this just goes beyond protesting. A yeah, lot of people oh, yeah. are wary of people with little microphones like this because you don't want to yeah. end up as someone's gotcha on a TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mainly see those on like the like all those political ones. Um, they always pop up on like YouTube and it, sometimes they're so random though. Like it's someone with a like little mic and they're like so this or that or whatever whatever and then they make them look stupid whoever yeah. they have, like they have the mic to it's so yeah like hey you know, what are like, your how, why is it a thing who made that a thing i don't I, I, I billy on the street billy on the street oh this my is, god this is your problem <laughs> as i literally just to... said i love that show it's billy Eichner. Oh i don't god. i somehow we can blame <laughs> yeah it's his fault then yeah, no, I'm I just, just kidding. It's not. I'm not trying to put false information out there. It's somebody's but no, yeah, fault. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little microphone. I, I, just, I just, I don't know. I, and especially in like a country where everyone's always like, "This is America," and blah 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 blah. Like, let I, I think we like let people exercise their rights and you know like believe what they feel is right. I, I don't, I just don't. I'm gonna get so like upset, but I just, I, I think like these. Just like they need to just stop. Like oh, it makes me so mad. It's, it makes it, me so mad that the KKK can have full rallies in broad daylight touting their hate. Homophobes mm -hmm. can stand on city corners and scream slurs at people at and concerts, nobody literally at concerts. That's an eye. But students are organizing 
to show uh support and make demands to try and like not like get a ceasefire to try and help out people in Gaza to you know like and that is what draws the the ire of the police and starts you know going from riots you know from from a protest into what people will then call a riot mm -hmm. just pisses oh pisses me off like make it make sense like it it just it yeah. makes sense well now, now i'm just getting mad we, we have to swap time <laughs> like my stomach is burning we're, we're gonna when end I up on something like you yeah, know I'm, I'm like i can get indigestion i'm getting angry i'm anyway we'll <laughs> you know free palestine we stand my ring light just went out like i have the worst lighting see now. like technology is like, angry God. at us <laughs> like we didn't yeah know, do we're gonna end on something I'm... a little on a little lighter a little sweeter <laughs> we're gonna talk about the mech a little bit <laughs> Yes. I got a little advice for the boys at the Met Gala. Stop with these boring ass suits. Okay, I was thinking the same thing. There's like there's like no imagination or like ounce of like, you know, creativity. It's just a suit. Yeah. Some of them had like it open a little bit and I mean, I don't know. I wasn't a fan of Troy Savon's outfit either. I didn't really like Troy Savon's that much. I think it was we could have we could have done a little more. I think Lil Nas X's was a little bit better if we're talking uh, about his was cute, know, yes, was and cute. he was giving with those with those poses, like he was yeah, he was himself. like at least he'll give it to us. Um, surprisingly, a suit that I did like, uh, and this is in the doc, I really liked Dan Levy's suit with the flowers uh, disappearing up into like the that like matte black on the top yeah, of his yeah, yeah, suit. Yeah. I actually really liked that. That was beautiful, yes. I thought that was nice, and I, I think it matches the theme. So the theme is the Garden of Time, which is okay. from a short story. So oh, wait, Garden of Time? It? Garden of Time. So the, but, a lot of people were confused about this, right? So the okay. theme is garden of time and so the met gala is to open up the new exhibit at the met right so the exhibit that they're opening is called sleeping beauties okay so the event was to open up a bunch of archival pieces so those are the sleeping beauties they're bringing out a bunch of archival things but the theme is garden of time which is based off of okay. a short story about a account and a countess who are living out their final days and they see like a mob start to approach them oh, to, to, to kill yeah. them, right? And so the count whittles away the rest of his time, plucking off the flowers, and they're called time flowers. So he's like reversing time. But by the end, you know, he runs out of flowers, the mob gets him, and and that's it. Which they they're all die. Yeah, there's a lot that we could dig into around that, but I don't know if uh, I want to sit here for another hour to do that because like, <laughs> there's a lot we could talk about in terms of celebrity, in terms of the state of the world and what a theme oh. like this kind of means, you know? Uh, but yeah, we will truly be here for another hour if we do that. So read some things, do your research. Cause I think there yeah. are really interesting things that we could talk about in terms of what garden of time means for society today, you know? That's a really good topic, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's a topic for another time, because right now I wanted to end light and talk about pretty flowers, which... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> to hear us talk about the Met Gala theme and specifically more about the short story, you know, fashion really isn't my gig, but I love literature. So we really kind of get into the nitty gritty of the story and what it means and, and how that fits into, uh, you know, world events, how that fits into the Met Gala. We also talk a lot about ghosts and a bunch of other fun stuff. So to hear us talk about that, go over to the Scream Crew podcast to hear the episode that I did with Ralph Anthony over there to really, you know, hear us get into the nitty gritty of it. <laughs> you know, Zendaya looked <laughs> great. She looked great. She looked pretty, but she also looked a little haunting, which I think fits the theme of yeah. Garden of Time about, you know, it's about the beauty of this garden that this man has surrounded him with, but also that haunting fear that yeah he will die, you know? I think she 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 looks isn't that always kills it. That's that's and funny. she gave us two looks, like she did, yes, two looks, gorgeous. Um not to be like off topic, but there was also another outfit that she just wore. Um, I think it was to do like press for that movie that she she had just Challengers. It, it was like a white dress and it kind of like 
belled out towards the end like it got wider and like there was like flowers on it and she just looked so freaking pretty like she was on good morning america and the view and she looks so beautiful she has Shut been killing up. these freaking looks la roach has really been getting her ass in some good outfits yes like la roach you know her stylist has really just been killing it shout out to la doing the damn thing <clears throat> uh, i really like seeing sydney sweeney in some black hair that was cute yes yeah, at cute. first yeah. i thought she was billy eilish <laughs> <laughs> oh so, my god you know there is like a resemblance actually you see it like with the black hair i was like there, billy yeah. is that you like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i thought long del Rey looked really pretty in this um with like the branches and the vines coming up also the branches being like looking kind of dead also for me like fit that theme of like haunting yeah. and beautiful like the, the progression of time it looks yeah. really good um in terms of some men that i also liked bad bunny i thought killed it oh my god yes he did really good bad bunny looks really good coleman domingo looks great and is someone that i think pushes male fashion in a in a really nice way he always looks super tasteful he, yeah you know how like some... <laughs> 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 you know how i'm trying to find this picture uh like it's so billy porter sometimes does the most with his you know yeah. fashion stuff i'm just oh, thinking yeah. of the one where like he had the the shades like in front of his hat that oh my gosh out. yes <laughs> like <laughs> billy porter sometimes is always doing the the most in a way that i'm like extra this is a lot whereas coleman domingo like pushes the note in terms of being like we're gonna do more than just a regular suit and it always yeah. looks beautiful and tasteful he looks very dapper all the time you know Holman Domingo always looks great and I love him in a, like a wide leg pant like this this wide leg yeah pant always, it's a good silhouette for him this was a really good theme actually like there was there was a lot of misses but there was also like more like great looks usually when I'm watching I'm just like no no but like this one had like a lot of like hits I also, it was, it was, it was this year good. wasn't so mad at people that kind of missed the theme because the theme is like pretty nebulous, you know, like Garden of Time. We can, you can evoke parts of it. It's because it's about like, you know, opulence and time and transcending and the, the yeah. progression of marching on time. We all die in the end. Like there's so much that you can pick out of this story, whether it's honing in on like the the opulence of the count the contest and like that showing of wealth and celebrity or you can focus in on the mob approaching them or just on the flowers or on the the time aspect there's a lot that you can take from it yeah. so I, this year i wasn't like mad at people who missed the theme so much as i was mm -hmm. in previous years like in the celestial bodies one where like you know we got Rihanna doing that lovely kind of like Pope number. And then some people were just like in regular suits. And I was like, you couldn't at least throw like a cross, throw an embroidered cross on something. Yeah. Bitch, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Give us is, is, was that the same year that everyone dressed like a witch? Like, no, like there, there was one year where there were literally girls in fedoras and like hooded cardigans. And I was like, what is this? Like, this is I not. I'm not this sure. Just, like, but that a is fall, crazy. They had like a fall photo shoot or something. Like that's what it looked like. <laughs> it was giving like fedora, like wannabe, like witch vibes. Mm. I, I think that's the one. I'm not sure. Speaking but of yeah. which, Kiki Palmer looked like Bayonetta with that high. Oh my god! With that, that high pony. Oh my giving. god! She it looks so giving. good. Yeah. And you know, I say all this like I'm not a fashion girly. Fashion's really not for me. I dress in like athleisure and t-shirts most of the time. Literally the same. But. As a casual bystander, I'm allowed to have an opinion. And I think, you know, these are my opinions. I think some of the girls were serving it. Demi yeah. Moore, she's taking it. This was a gorgeous outfit. Oh, yeah. She looks it's so like good. Circle. She almost looks like a like a bird. It's very, very elegant. She looks great. Yes. Uh and Did you see Carol G. Let me let's I have it pulled up. Let's see. Carol G. She was giving like Zelda, like Yes, she's this is Elvin Queen right vibes. here. And kind of like <laughs> Sleeping Beauty too. She looks really pretty. She looks here. so good. Wow. So pretty. Crazy. Yeah. She looks oh Queen Latifah looks really good too. Oh yeah, yeah. Queen Latifah looked really good. Oh wow. I think Avina's was Lizzo really there? Nice. Lizzo was there and she had on this like um 
brown number with a bunch of flowers on it and like uh So it was her, okay. the ribbing I didn't was recognize out her. kind of she looks really good i like it i like i love a headpiece Yeah. i like i like a little headpiece like a little tuft of hair coming out i think it's always really Yeah, fun yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I talk a lot of shit about j-lo but i will say Oh this my god, don't get me started on J-Lo. i will say this that woman knows how to wear an outfit She, no, she looked good. She looked good, and I I almost came for her in, in an episode, but I had to cut it. But yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll um come for her now. That woman like, wants us to believe she's a good singer so much. She wants us to believe that. And I think if she just took the Madonna around and was like, I'm a performer, I'm a performer first. And that's okay. We love performers. Britney, Madonna, like you are, y'all are performers. I don't need the vocals to be 100. mm. yeah and she has like a lot of songs now that are just like where she like belts and i'm just like uh She wants us to believe that she's Whitney and you're not Whitney. And that's Yeah. okay. Let Whitney be Whitney. You are Yeah, J-Lo. I mean, she's a great dancer. Jayla's a great dancer. Fantastic. Phenomenal dancer, phenomenal Yeah. model. She's even a, a decent actress. I like her in the things that I've seen her in, you know? Oh, yeah. She has some good, good movies out there. She should just leave the singing to um, Ashanti and Christina Milian because, I mean, aren't they the ones who recorded her albums? I've heard, Oh. you know, the, the, the vocals, we, we've heard them. The vocals are there. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, off topic, sorry. Uh, you know, you know, off topic, and you know what? Let's let's end it there because you know, like what? What else are we going to talk about? You know, but Bad Bunny, like I said, I love a headpiece. That hat that he had on with the flowers Yes. and it's very regal. And I'll say this to Chris Hemsworth: You are a host, a co-chair, and you didn't think to put on anything to to. He had the, like, the light suit on, right? It was that, like, light Yeah, suit that was open. and it's a cute suit, but It's come keeping on off front now. of my gala. Come And not if on you're, like, now. one of the ones, like, you know. You're one of the hosts. You need to be set in the bar to show us what to do. And I think the other hosts all did a really good job. Bad Bunny did fantastic. Yeah. Um, oh, God, who are the other hosts? <laughs> like Zendaya. He had, like, some I'm like, flowers, is Zendaya, too. Zendaya uh, Chris Hemsworth, Bad Bunny? There's one other host that I'm missing. And J-Lo. It was J-Lo. Oh, and J-Lo. Let me forget. And J-Lo, yeah. <laughs> see that this is how jayla oh my god you know she left the orange drink at home if you know you know <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um uh, but yeah like if you're oh gonna poor be jayla the host give us give us like give us the fantasy you know yeah i think he was the only host who was like kind of underwhelming huh? well not kind of but like he was underwhelming huh um yeah yeah like he just didn't he didn't go there and it like What he had on was gorgeous. I, I that suit was really nice. Yeah, It just but wasn't it wasn't a gala. it wasn't what we needed. You know, we need a little extra oomph to it. And I'm not saying everyone needs to be in a costume, Yeah. but give us something. Yeah. Yeah, make What us about have an opinion. Kim K? Did I see Kim's outfit? I usually kind of like gloss She over was giving whatever Kim Violet is Chachki wearing. when she did the Death Becomes Her Challenge, um, Oh, when she yes, was like that waist. so cinched. Yes. Although that little cardigan she had on, it was not like, it didn't go... I'm not, I'm honestly not that mad So at there's the cardigan. speculation that there was a wardrobe malfunction. Maybe like your girl throw, throw, throw this on. I also thought Tyla Yeah. looked really good. And she had on this, she had this like lovely kind of like hourglass thing to like show the time Yes. aspect of it. I thought she looked gorgeous. Yeah, Tyla looks fantastic. Um, but yeah, let's let's end it here. We could talk because there's just so many outfits. But uh, we're going to end it here because we're running up to uh, to that two-hour mark. You know, I like to keep it a little under there. Period. Ralph Anthony, thank you so much for doing this. This was a fantastic episode. <laughs> I've had such a great time with you. Do Same. you want Thank to, you uh, so much for having me. of course, you want to let the girls know where they can follow you, want to promote anything? Yeah. Um, well, you can catch me every Tuesday, the Scream Crew podcast, uh, available on all platforms. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Scream Crew Podcast, or if you want to follow my personal journey, you can uh, follow me on Instagram. at Ralph Anthony with three Y's. And it's pretty much the same all across the board. TikTok, all of it, YouTube. Gonna start like doing YouTube videos now. Um, and yeah, and um, you can keep your ears open for Jake um, as a guest on Scream Crew Podcast, which is coming soon. 
Or maybe we can mm-hmm. tackle that whole uh, Gardens of, of Time topic on there because that sounds really interesting now. Like, we could, I you know want... what? You give me a week to read because it's a short story. It's not long. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm down to read it and then like we can talk a little bit more about uh, the meaning on why why that could be the theme, you know? I'd yeah. be down for that. That Yeah, mm-hmm. that sounds so like interesting. So yeah. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much all where you can find me. But again, thank you for having me. I had so much fun. Like I feel like I'm literally just like talking with the friend that I've known for so long. And that's that's the vibe we like to keep here is like, you know, just shooting the shit, little kibitz, you know, we're vibing, we're chilling. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. I've had such a fun time. And y'all, if you have not listened to this Green Curve podcast, I'm really, I'm telling you, get into it. And if you're someone that you're like, you don't like horror that much, you know, if you feel like you have to, you know, skip ahead a little bit, I I appreciate that you put um segments in your oh, yeah, like, chapters, in, yeah. in the chapters chapter of the thing? timeline so if you're someone you're like i don't like 911 calls because sometimes the 911 calls they could be a little much you know they could be a little, a little heavy yeah they're a little heavy sometimes so if you want to skip to that and get to the hot topics you could do that and you know it, it's such a fun time and they're short episodes you know I, I understand two hours is a lot to commit to <laughs> and i appreciate everyone who who's listening this far but you know oh sc- scream career is shorter you know <laughs> yeah get they're, into it, they're more bite-sized yeah 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 so fantastic i've been jake you can follow me at poison touch pod on instagram if you want to follow my you know my regular shit it's at crow Kunk, where i mostly talk about x-men and pokemon and things like that you can also see me on youtube that's also poison touch pod where i am currently doing a 365 day persona 3 playthrough where i play one in-game day every single day for the entire year that's been really fun and i love to do anything gaming related so i'm doing that over on the youtube and uh over at patreon that's patreon.com slash push and touch pod you can join the uh join the fun for five dollars a month to get full video access to every episode bonus episodes uh we're doing x-men recaps right now we're doing some lost media questions we're tacking a lot over there, so I try to make sure everyone gets their money's worth. Oh, also priority questions. If you are on the Patreon, you have a uh, a submission link to make sure that your questions are answered up front and early. So yeah, we'll catch y'all later. Oof, wait, no! You can also call in to submit your own questions at 312-725-6483 and I'll pull tarot cards with your advice or you can uh, write me in at poisontouch.com. Boom! That's it. Now we'll catch y'all later. <laughs> Bye!